Well, welcome back to the run-up. Well, joining us to discuss the issues that I mentioned earlier, uh, Opunabo Inko Taria, he's a public affairs analyst, and Johnson Argo, legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. Yeah, it's my, it's my pleasure. Good morning. Good morning, morning. Good morning, my dear. You're welcome. Well, they'll be joining me virtually, as you can see. However, that doesn't affect anything. Okay, so let's just go straight to it. I think we should start with Festus Keamu's uh, petition against the Labour Party uh, presidential candidate and his deputy, uh, Baba Dati Ahmed. The former Minister of Education, Obiez Ekwesili, uh, has... Um, dismissed that and called it a, a ludicrous piece of nonsense. Ibn Abo. Hello. Open Abo. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Respond to that. Respond to the call, the petition by Kayamo and uh, obvious Kwesili's reaction to it. Well, first, I think uh, Kayamo it's just to me, just a question of rabble rousing. Because I find the petition is completely negative. It's what Martin Luther King referred to as the destructive John Major instincts. John John John, John Major instincts, rather. First and foremost, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry. Kermu, he was himself guilty of the very allegations leveled against uh, <coughs> Dr. Muhammad and uh, Excuse me, I have to come. Sorry, sorry. Leveled against that Ahmed and Pito. Because even while trying to accuse them of treason, he went ahead to label them, call them names, and even attempted. He got a senior victim of Mandu, who also attempted, not even attempted, he also interpreted two man of, of the law. And which is even wrong because it is subjects. Where was Kefestus Kayamu when um, M. Suolumu, I think that's his name, threatened non egos in Lagos? Where was Kefestus Kayamu when even the president elect made some inflammatory statements? Where was Kefestus Kayamu? So I think it's all about trying to retain his position in uh, the Federal Executive Council. And so he's doing everything possible to ingratiate himself with the president-elect. And that is why he's coming up to defend what ought not to be defended in the first place. Now, let us also go into, take under advisement, um, the issues raised by that year. This is an aggrieved person. If today I'm putting you to court, uh, my brother, I think Johnson, will also attest or elucidate for that. If today I'm putting you to court, my charge will be your thief. I cannot put you to court to say, I think you're a thief. I won't put you to court to say, I suspect you're a thief. Then in that case, it is business. The suit, I mean, abomination will be business. If I'm putting you to court, I'll say you're a criminal, and that's why I'm putting you to court. So if today that time I said, the elections are not free and fair, and it doesn't recognize the president elect as uh, the winner of the 2023 presidential elections, he has not said anything that is treasonable. To start with, it cannot, he cannot even be accused of treason because he said the constituted authority. And now, because I watched that on the sister station precisely on channels, and he said, You are talking of a president elect. A president elect is not yet the president, he's only a president elect. God forbid, if today anything happens to Bola Metinimu, if he closes his eyes today, uh, he can never be given a president of taking the oath of office. It is after taking the oath of office that you can now say president, and you say certain things and you say uh, the excuse. But then, right now, he's a president-elect. So you cannot, because of what he said, this is an agreed fact. Who feels he has been robbed? And we all know that the election were savaged, and even Nigerians were savaged. The voters were savaged. So you cannot go out to say, come up to say, 
ah, he's been accused of treasonable felony. How? Nevertheless, that does not detract from the fact that whether you are talking about a sitting president or you are talking about, there are certain statements you make, especially when the statements are incendiary and have, have the propensity to uh, elicit reactions or stimulate actions against a constitutional authority. I agree with you. But that does not fall within that realm. And so, as Festus Kiyamo, as far as I'm concerned, is just a busybody trying to impress Gwala Medinibu so as to retain his seat in the Federal Executive Council. He's attempting to be a rabble riser, but in a very negative sense. Because all what, we, all what is said and the allegations prepared against that Yame and um, Pitogi, as far as I am concerned, they all suffer from ethics of reason and poverty of logic in terms of uh, argument and in terms of uh, trying to substantiate those facts. Okay, well, thank you, Punabo. John Senago, you are a legal practitioner. Come in here and tell us whether what your legal colleague has said makes any sense. I'm talking about. I agree, I agree with him John absolutely. Festus. I agree with him absolutely. Actually, the question whether someone has committed an offense or not is to be interpreted by reference to the particular statute against which the person's conduct is said to have contravened. Let me put it slightly, slightly more straightforward. Before you say I have committed an offense, you should be pointing at the particular law I con my conduct is against. So in this instance, I would have been happy to read the particular section of the particular act which Mr. Dati Ahmed's statement contravened. Secondly, I also read with amusement the part of Mr. Um, Mr. Keyamo's um, letter alleging that P2B has committed the offense through Dati Ahmed. I was thinking that crimes are not exactly vicarious. People should be held ac accountable for their own particular conduct. The individual that Ahmed said in his own opinion when he was saying this, he, uh, saying his statements, he didn't say in the opinion of himself and, and Peter Obi. So I was wondering the motivation that Kayamo we had to uh, take away from the person who said quotes me, this is what I'm saying, and that reboots the person who didn't say the same. That shows to me that he was just playing to the gallery as opposed to analyzing or discussing legal issues. So in my view, um, he has said nothing other than making noise. And it would be curious to see if the DSS acts on noise making. Oh, no one should expect Yes, I no one should expect the DSS to uh, become a backing dog for Festus Kayamu. They are a, an institution established by law, and they are, the scope of their functions are uh, enumerated. It's not meant to become a backing dog for any politician at all. They are uh, an established institution. DSS is supposed to be very respect respectable. They should know the limits of their law, of their powers. And I believe it does not include gagging people. Uh, if you analyze what Mr. That the Ahmed has said. Yeah, it's quite clear. He says, I am aggrieved. <laughs> this is the cause of my grievance. I have taken it to court. That's the summary of what Mr. Dati Ahmed said. And he goes further to explain that the reason why he's aggrieved is that the constitution of Nigeria is not being followed. And in his view, the constitution of Nigeria is the only means through which any person can seize power, as in any person can come to government in Nigeria. And that's clearly what the Constitution of Nigeria says, that no part of Nigeria can be governed except in such a way as has been prescribed by the Constitution of Nigeria. So if you attempt to govern Nigeria except in a way that has been prescribed by the Constitution of Nigeria, or a part of Nigeria except in the way that has been prescribed in the Constitution of Nigeria, you are infringing the constitution. In other words, you are governing outside the constitution. And what exactly is coup? A coup is simply an, uh, 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 so -called, what they call, normally call revolution. It's so called an attempt to govern a state outside the scope, outside the prescription of the constitutive document. 
in which case the constitution. So uh, Mr. Kayamu should be worried. He should, in fact, be talking about fast tracking the legal dispute as opposed to asking people not to discuss their condition. It's just like if you don't want us to discuss our condition, don't give us the uh, the, the condition to uh, don't put us in the condition at all. So what Mr. Datiame has just done is to exercise a right that is very fundamental. And I believe Section 39 of the Nigerian Constitution allows people to express their opinions on what they think about their condition. So Mr. Datiame has just discussed his condition. And this section and other sections of the Nigerian Constitution dealing on fundamental rights are so fundamental that even DSS is not permitted to derogate from it. And Nigeria cannot even make laws to derogate from such fundamental uh, rights, assuming there is any power in the DSS in any way at all to uh, pretend that it is keeping peace and gagging people. If Nigeria cannot uh, make such laws, and if Nigeria makes such laws, some of the international rights instruments that Nigeria is signatory to does not permit that. And Nigeria cannot be pleading its local law arrangements as an excuse to derogate from such international obliga obligations. So it's, it's, uh, by Faisal Kayamo's letter, he is setting Nigeria up for not just unlawful acts, but for international ridicule. People are watching us. They are seeing what we are doing. They are seeing, okay, somebody is alleging that you have rigged an election and you do not just want the court to listen to the person's com 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 uh, complaints. You also want to intimidate the person with the instruments of the state. Right. The DSS, the DSS, a special instrument of the state, and any act of the DSS in this particular circumstance are looked at, upon with suspicion. So it's better, Mr. Skayamo talks about peace, talk about uh, ad addressing the grievances of the people who are complaining instead of trying to intimidate and shut them up. That's the way I stay. All right. How do you respond to the coloration that this gives to uh, the APC as a party? Because just as Mr. Opunabo alluded, uh, members of their party had made comments that were even worse. And we didn't see... Other than the fact that Festus Kiamo tweeted uh, cautioning uh, Bayo Nonuga against his comment, and he retweeted and retweeted more, we didn't see strong um, actions from their camp. Festus Kiamo himself is guilty of what Mr. Bayo Nonuga is doing. He has been doing ethnic dog whistling all along through the campaign. That Mr. Bayo Nonuga took his own step further does not change what the nature of what Mr. Uh, uh, Kayamo has been doing all along. Who has he been describing as well in well as? All right. Uh, have you not read that kind of tweet before? Was it not sectional ethnic? Hmm. Uh, should a government functionary in the first place be this brazenly partisan? We are paying the Kayamo's salary as a minister of state or, or what for labor. So he should have dedicated his whole time serving the Nigerian people in the Ministry of Labor and Productivity. But we saw him very active in the campaign council of the presidential candidates of APC. So who is going to pay us back for the money, uh, for the time he stole uh, uh, um, uh, uh, campaigning for APC? That is Wasn't a good question. Paid? That is a good question. And you being a legal practitioner, um, should there not be some sort of petitions against him by, the, by Nigerians? I think uh, Nigerians... To ask are, this very question that you're asking. Yes. Nigerians who are agree should be able to take that up. There should be in the court some powers to uh, punish or restrain him from doing such or, for, or making him to at least account to the Nigerian people. I believe that in the APC presidential council, he's meant to have received some reward or he's hoping to receive some reward. So it's the question of uh, conflict of interest. He's conflicting the, his private interest as a citizen of Nigeria entitled to participate in politics with his office as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. 
All right, Apunabo, please come in here. Um, how do you respond to uh, some statements in some quarters that APC, especially through their spokesperson, uh, Keyamu, makes it look like uh, others who are not members of the APC are second-class citizens in this country because they are of the ruling party? No, the fact is, uh, but before I go into that, uh, let me add to what my brother said. Because even in the United States of America, which is supposed to be the birthplace of democracy, when the American president is running for a second term, any time he flew the, or flies the presidential jet, he pays for it. Unlike in Nigeria, we are the state pays for presidential jet that the president is the president uses during elections. The American president pays for it because that is your private business. And the interest in the interest of equity, definitely there must not be any form of discrimination within the cognizance of the So just like a private man will fly his private jet or fly hire a jet and fly, the same way the president the president who eventually becomes a presidential candidate for somebody running for a second also pays for the jet. It could be there could be a some form of subsidy but he has to pay for that jet. So in now, you are talking of um, Festus Tiamo and the PDP. It is so sad, infernal, and highly provocative that a sitting minister who brazenly, like my brother rightly said, come on air, will have the guts to come on air, openly campaign, subvert, sub forgetting his um, uh, appointment as a minister for state. Now, Festus, in fact, acknowledged that fact, and that is why he observed this time he spoke, he said, in my capacity as Festus Teamo. How do you distinguish that? You're a city minister, and you say, in your capacity. And you find him derogating, discriminating, castigating other members while your language should be a language of reconciliation. I tell you what, Festus Kayamo is doing that because that is what even the president, the president elect thought before the elections, during the elections, and even after the elections. Polam and Tinibu statements have always been inflammatory. To a point where really it got frustrated, so I started attacking the president himself. And you know, most times these followers, they watch the body language, and actions, the deeds of their principal. And that's what Francis Gamma is trying to do. Now, every other party, apart from, I listened to his analysis yesterday, and honestly, I was ashamed of myself that that is a member of Binaba. That a man, a member of the inner, hey, there's somebody this morning on the sister teacher in criticizing him, signposted most of his malficent acts in the past and said he was not even surprised. Francis Kiyama himself was the same person who yesterday, the interview you're talking about was even yesterday on the sister teacher, who yesterday said they should wait for the courts to decide. You say you're waiting for the courts to decide and you're interpreting. Section 299. All I expected the self to do was to say it is subjudice. I will not be, want to be as guilty as those I am accusing. But he's guilty as those he's accusing. And if you come to FPD, you must come with clean hands. You don't approve and reprove it. You will leave your mouth and must not be dripping with words of nullification and interposition. So if you talk of the other parties, I can tell you, not just stresses, it means the president elects. It is a question of, I am the victor, and I take it all. It's not a question of no victor, no vanquish. You see, let me tell you, Maureen, that's why I said we are in for a worse situation. Like in the Bible, they say, I forgot to do I think it has to do with Asala. My father flogged you with which I have things and so on, I will use copions and so on. Mark what I'm saying, I'm prepared to vindicate me. That is what we are, we are going to see. Should Bola Ahmed remain, because it is now subjected to the clinical prognosis of the legal lab. Mm. 
So we are waiting for the Supreme Court justices to give their judgment for now make a pronouncement. But should that happen, Nigerians will play pray for the man uh, what's his name, uh, the president. Sorry, with due respect. Who All right, uh, a bit of connectivity problem there. But Johnson Agu, uh, let me come back to you. You have said what he said, that Festus Kiamu uh, is subjudice already. What is the import of that on uh, the, the position of the president-elect, Bola Tinubu Ahmed, since he is his spokesperson? I do not know if I should hold uh, Bola um, Ahmed Tinubu responsible for what Festus Kayamu said that he is saying in his own capacity as Festus Kayamu. But if we should do things according to Festus Kayamu's standards, then Bola Ahmed Tinubu will be liable as, uh, as much as P2B is liable for what any other person has said or done, in which will now include Festus Kayamu himself. So to the extent that Festus Kayamu has insulted or assaulted the sacred legal principles, we should now also say that Bola Ahmed Tinubu is responsible for such assaults on the sacred legal principles. For example, when a matter is said to be in the court, it is expected that all parties respect the fact that it is in the court and restrict the depth of their commentary on the matter. This does not mean that parties cannot say they have gone to court or cannot say the subject that they have submitted to the court, as in the case of um, Ahmed Dati Ahmed. But passing judgment or reaching conclusions are supposed to be reserved for the court. If you know, or if you have reached conclusions on the outcome of the case, why are you in court? But if you believe that the court still have a role, you can still present your case, as in this case, um, that Yamed has said, this is the subject I took to the court. Faces Kayamu can say, this is our response to it, and leave it there. And we now will expect the court to say, I have seen the petition. I have seen the response to the petition, and this is my verdict. So a situation where uh, uh, we see or we hear Faces Kayamu reaching conclusions on behalf of the court, for example, telling us that the court will throw away the, 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 the thing. This much to be desired. Is he suggesting that he has seen a copy of the judgment even before the case started? Mm. That is a question. Is he don't suggesting forget. that? Don't forget, my brother. Okay, but you also want to... on, on, uh, interpreted the issue of the FCT, if it's a state or not. And it's, it's that is that. Exactly, that that is old argument line of argument is what the Supreme Court will say, and it will be to show to watch out, which means already the judgment has been procured. And that is and, a show. And that's the situation. If that's the case, yeah, that's a, so even if that judge, even if the judgment is given in favor of APC, the world will say it has been procured. If it's a tandem with Spencer's Kiyama's argument on telly yesterday, how would they have gone? Ridical. Clearly, he has set yeah, exactly. up for some ridical. For ridical. So it would appear and that... And that's the kind of... It would appear that Spencer's Kiyama has... It's just... It's, I don't want to use the particular word, but I am telling you, he's not annoyingly garrulous. Trying to ingratiate, trying to please the masters and wanting to give Nigeria the impression and his masters that they are is more important or most important in the world, so that I must be rewarded for the role I have played. Otherwise, honestly, being a self, I am I am days when I listen to I remember when he said Bola Tukamedinibu was not convicted. He only paid money because the court asked him to pay. Before the court will my order you to pay, definitely what led to that? There is a corollary. What led to it? Definitely, you were guilty. And the same person, so asked him, is that not a penalty? He said it was not a penalty. He said it, it's on record. You can Google. He said it was, it was not a penalty. So they asked you to make a payment, and you say it is no penalty? I, I am staggered. All in the interest, because this is second, this basic element, year one uh, law. 
penalty. Penalty means you are being punished for an act that is deep wrong in the eyes of the law. Okay, we, we won't uh, go deep. Dollars. We wouldn't want to go deep into that matter. That no, 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 no. First and foremost, you have to look at the credibility of the media. That's what I'm trying to establish. You look at the credibility of the media, and that's why even in the first letter to DSS, it was dismissed. They never acted on it, and I believe they will also dismiss this because it it, it, it it lacks any form of intelligence, no symbol of intelligence. What's the reasonableness in that? You're equally guilty of what you're accusing the next man. Why not concentrate? You said, I want, after me, I'll, I'll, I'll bust my, my video and that. And so bloody what? You've come to Potter many times and you've lost how many times? All right. So is that it? the petition is out there. He's written it. So mandatorily, the SSS is supposed to respond, right? Am I correct in, in saying that? It, Johnson? Is within, it is within the, the bias of the SSS. It's within the bias. They, they, they have acknowledged the receipt. If they don't say anything, then they say, you cannot go past the essence. You're supposed to be independent and not partisan. Because the ruling APC is a ruling party, so he thinks he can ride on that back. But you cannot go past the essence. If you have an SSS DG that is what is on it, you can't cross. So I don't think the SSS will respond to that. And what he did on telly was to tell Nigerians and to also indirectly compel the SSS to act on that. I mean, it's just unfortunate that most people have lost confidence in my judiciary. Otherwise, I can tell you that I will not mention a name or two names of persons that the um, Supreme Court disgraced and even called the NBA to withdraw their certificates. Now, this issue. For coming to court to present all kinds of frivolous. Yeah, sorry? Go ahead, sorry? go ahead. Go ahead. I thought you were... Okay, so, so this matter is. I don't think it will really go to court. I pray it goes to court and let us hear what the Supreme Court justices will say. Because these are very baseless. What, what are you saying? On what grounds are you saying? What are the incendiaries? What are the inflammatory that you consider treasonable? What are they? Meanwhile, you are guilty of the same offense you are accusing those other ones, if not more. So why not concentrate on your court judge, on your court process? If they give me judgment, fine. I, 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 I also believe I have a certain conviction that the elections were rigged. But the matter is before the court. And I, if they say, I have more than enough proof to show that the elections were rigged. More than enough. All right, more, than I mean more, than, more than enough. Okay. But it is before the court. Yeah, it is before you the court. So I wouldn't want to be subjudiced. can only comment. When the matter is before, that's what I say. You can only comment on it contemporarily. Yeah. It's not, that that not not you are going to be subject. That's yeah. why you don't be bothered. But now it is in court. But that is what I expect of Pesto Stanley, who as a self ought to be a role model when it comes to the legal profession. Okay, John. And you hear him every time he's on there. Don't forget, I'm a member of the NABA. Don't forget, I am this. Are you trying to intimidate? The sister said you also said it was. It's Pesto trying to intimidate the anchors, the anchors and the presenters and what have you. Who can say what about what? What is it? You can go to court and be floored by someone who doesn't call to buy just two years ago. Agreed with you can be floored by it. It, has, it happened with even uh, Rotary, Rotary Williams after how many years at the bar. So the judges are no longer moved by those things. Let him lead by example and not come on air to make unfounded claims and threatening. And if the DSS should act on this, I can assure you. It might stimulate, it might catalyze what you least expect. That's the truth about it. Yeah, Johnson, coming here, um, from the legal perspective, the response that may or may not come from the SSS. Actually, when a petition is brought to the uh, uh, attention of the SSS, they have two basic options. To think that the Petition has substance on the one hand, or to say that a petition has no substance on the second hand. If they say the petition has no substance, no problem, that's the end. If they think it has some substance that requires further investigation, they have an option to invite the person who is the subject of the petition 
and hear that person's own side of the story to clarify whatever the person might have done or might have said. Because th there is this concept in the Nigerian constitution that before any administrative or judicial or whatever powers are exercised against a citizen of the country, the person should be given an opportunity to be heard. That is what people normally call section 36 of the Nigerian constitution we're hearing. So the the, 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 yes. The, 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 in, this, in this instance, we will be expecting, assuming the DSS thinks that there is preliminary or prima facie content in what Mr. Kayamu has written to them, to invite the duo of Peter B and um, um, Dati Amber and hear them. After hearing them, the DSS might form an opinion that, okay, whatever that we suspected before, there is no suspense in it. Go your way. Don't mind the rabble rouser. They might also say, oh, actually, I now see what the rabble rouser is saying more clearly. They will now exercise the powers in the act to procure court proceedings and prosecute according to the law, which the, they, in their view, have formed that the that Yamed and all Peter will be has breached and the court will have the final say in determining whether BSS has proven the that the conduct alleged against that Yamed and Peter will be contravenes the law within the jurisdiction of DSS or not. But before the court will come to that conclusion, the court will also have to hear from each of Peter will be and all that the army in a normal court proceeding. And how the court long, how long should it take before we get to hear the response from the SSS on this matter? How long will it take before they respond to this? Uh, they work at their pace. Yeah, we can so there's them. no legal time yeah. frame for them to I respond. Don't see, I don't see any legal timeline. Yes, they can take like forever investigating because they are obligated. <laughs> exactly. they, they are obligated to do thorough jobs. If they take uh, P2B and uh, Dati Ahmed into custody hastily, he spells a lot of doom actually because P2B and Dati Ahmed are persons of public interest at the moment. So they, I don't see them. I don't see DSS who is empowered to seek security of the uh, the society acting too hastily because taking the duo of uh, P2B and that young man into custody hastily will endanger the peace of the society, the security of the society. I'm not saying this as a matter of threat. It is what I observe because P2B and that young man interest the demography we call the youth. And we must accept that the youth are in majority in Nigeria. The statistical records say so. So I'm not saying that all these uh, youth support it to be under chairman, but a sizable number, whom I think are more in number than the entire security apparatus of Nigeria. The Nigerian Army, we have their numbers. The uh, DSS, we have the total number employed. The police, we have the total number. If you aggregate all of them, they are not as high in number as the group of Nigerians we call the youth. So you should imagine what the outcome would be if the group of Nigerians we call the youth feel so much aggrieved that they take to extract judicial method to press their grievance. They are weak here. Your final words on this before we move all to the next kinds subject. Of interpretations, hmm. all, I'm about leaving you, all, all kinds of interpretations will be moving into an arrest because a lot of people will believe that they have been intimidated into submission because the ruling party. Uh, because uh, uh, Bola Medtini will belong to the ruling party. So, in addition to the issue of the youth, no doubt, Nigerians, most Nigerians, will believe that because the matter has been taken to court, 
they are trying to use extrajudicial means to intimidate them into submission. And that will give rise to what the Professor Jama is purportedly preaching against. I say purportedly. Because that is not the intention of Petrus Kiamo. He's only doing what he's doing in order to satisfy his new, is now going to be new master, who is Bola Do you see this? I had said that would be your final word before um, uh, we, we jump to the next subject of discussion. They, but do you see an invisible. Uh, do you see leave. an, or do you hear an invisible drum beating? With all that's playing out right now, would you say there's an invincible drum beating somewhere? Yes, before, before now, I heard the drums and trumpets, the beats of Easter Sunday. That's before the election. Well, we all thought the divas was going to be a joyous daybreak that to put an end to the longs suffering the long political activity. But right now, I hear a different drum. I hope that is listening so that I can also write the pieces. I, I hear a different, and this is the drum of disintegration. The drum, you know, because our political engine is overheated. Social climate is sitting in climate and the economic factors are in the combustion. We are headed slowly but steadily, I mean, tortuously to around the world. And I, never in the history of this country have the tenuous legislation been so threatened. We depend on the judiciary to serve justice and not give judgment. Once justice is served, it will placate even their dreams. You know, just like the, by Lord Justice, you have once said, justice must not only be done, but must be seen to have been manifestly done. In other words, a lot of people made this mistake. In other words, even the gate man, your gate man, who is not learned, knows and is satisfied that yes, justice prevailed. So the onus is now on the judiciary to ensure that justice prevails. Not just giving judgment. What I'm saying is that in the past, they've given judgment. Lawrence case, uh, 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 Fabio's case, and so many other cases, even in the case of River State in 2007 or so. But I am not now saying it must be this way, the pendulum must swing this way or swing that way. No. Let Nigeria be satisfied that justice is delivered. And once that is done, even the agree, having been convinced, will, be, will try as much as it can to stave off whatever crisis, impending crisis. But if Nigerians believe that what they got on that day was judgment and not justice, I can tell you, I believe the trial and tenuous litigation will be broken. And that is where we are going to have a problem. So right now, the onus is on the Supreme Court. I don't like talking about the Court of Appeal because you still have the appellate court Supreme Court. The Court of Appeal can give a judgment is upon the hell by the Supreme Court. So I always talk of the Supreme Court, which is the final court. Let the Supreme Court ensure that justice is served and not justice is judgment is given. We're going to move now. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for all your insight on this very, very, very serious matter.